you gonna clear from this um, Shakespeare deal? Zip, right? Actually, you're paying them because your time is valuable. A pilot and five episodes. I mean, high six figures. And if it hits, you get participation. Participation? In syndication? Yup. You get paid every time it airs. First run, rerun. I mean, 4 a.m. in Singapore in the year 3000. Basically, you're going to be able to afford to buy England, dig up Shakespeare, and get them to write the Christmas show. <laughs> <laughs> this television program you're promoting, this gold mine, what is it exactly? Okay, no pitch. Gather your arm. Come on. It's not cops. It's not young doctors. I mean, none of that TV crap. <laughs> You're a teacher. Mike Solomon. You're young, idealistic, new to the system. Inner city high school. Rough, dope, M1s, teen sex. Wow. No one cares. I mean, all the other teachers are burnouts, but not you. Why not? Because he cares. You grew up in the neighborhood. You want to get something back. You know, that sounds sort of okay. It's almost realistic. I mean, you can deal with real problems. I could be vulnerable. I could mess up sometimes. And at night, after the sun goes down, you have superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> superpowers? <laughs> yeah, I mean, who wants to watch that caring, feeling, odd-wet mother's garbage? It's over. But after sundown, you're invincible. I mean, modified X-ray vision. And you can fly. But only about 10 feet up. <laughs> See, we're keeping it real. <laughs> Great. So after dark, you help the kids and you help the community with your powers. But do they know it's me when I have superpowers? Oh, no, no, no. You're in leather, denim. They just think it's some great dude. I mean, <laughs> great title, killer title, night school. <laughs> the dolls, the posters, the clothes! Hey, you can get an album easy! But, I can't sing. Well, someone can. <laughs> hey, you can even keep that trouble escape. There's no conflict. Hey, they'll probably extend. Because now you're a teacher. So, just think about it, okay? I mean, what's the think? You've got a network commitment! Oh, just forget about this Hamlet crap. I mean, who are you kidding? What do you mean? Andy, I know you. I gave you your break. You're no actor. What? <laughs> You're better than that. An actor, what? It's just some English guy who can't get a series. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm in town. I'm staying at the Ritz. I'll talk to Lillian and get things rolling for you, okay? Okay. Hey, 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 hey. Great to meet you. You act, right? John Sidney Barrymore. Great! We'll keep you mutt. <laughs> <laughs> Barrymore. Any relation to the dead guy? <laughs> Distant. <laughs> yeah, man. Think about it. The third coast. <laughs> Don't say it. He's right. He's totally right. Night school? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Think about the money. You had that kind of money. Yes, as I grew older. Wealth is obscene in the young. It stunts <laughs> ambition. <laughs> but, but what about security? What is this mania for security? What's the worst that can happen? Well, I play Hamlet and Gary's right. And no one will hire me. And soon I'm face down in the gutter, wearing rags, without a job or anywhere to go. Isn't that the way every evening should end? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I talking to you? It's not just the money. I'm not that superficial. It's the fame. Do you know how many people will watch night school, even if it's a bomb? Of course. There is fame in that sort of work. You may be admired, lusted after. You may acquire all the attributes of a well-marketed detergent. But there is fame, mere celebrity, and there is glory. Do you appreciate the difference? Of course. Fame pays better. <laughs> fame has beachfront property. Fame needs bodyguards. Glory. Only an audience. 
come on, that audience has changed. Don't you think that if Shakespeare were around now, he'd be writing normally? I beg your pardon. You know, when his characters say, how are you, instead of how dost thou my liege? What is a liege, anyway? And what's a fartle? And to be or not to be, there's this line, right? Hamlet is thinking about suicide. He tells about how awful life is, the whips and scorns of time. Correct. And he says, why should anyone put up with all this when he himself might his quietest make with a bare bodkin? Quietest bodkin? Quietest means death. A bodkin is a dagger. And this next line, who would fardels bear? A fardel is a burden. Any burden. So why can't we change it? Why can't we just say, so with all this garbage in the world, why not just stab yourself instead of dragging your fartles around? <laughs> then people would get it. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Tell me, if you loathe Shakespeare, if Los Angeles is so alluring, why did you audition? Because my agent made me. Because Deidre loves Hamlet. Because... Because they asked me. Because they asked you? Because somewhere, someone thought that maybe, just maybe I could do it. I wouldn't have to be just Jim Corman, rookie surgeon for the rest of my life. On TV, no one cared if I was talented. I had the right twinkle, the demographic appeal. And after a while, I started to think maybe that's all I had. If I didn't show up, they could just use the poster. But then I came to New York, and somebody said, wait. Maybe Andy Rowley could do Shakespeare. On stage, say those lines. Act! Yes, but they were wrong. I belong on TV, and I know that. It's not a crime. <coughs> I'm sorry I got you down here. I'm sure if you go back and talk to whomever, you can get this whole Hamlet deal canceled. Because I'm really tired, and my girlfriend won't sleep with me, <laughs> and I think my agent is very ill, but she refuses to discuss it. And my life is an embarrassing joke, so if you please just leave, I'd appreciate it. Can you imagine you're the first performer to experience such misgivings? Can you possibly believe that every prospective Hamlet did not tremble and pale and bolt? Hamlet will change you, Andrew. Make no mistake. And the deal, as you term it, cannot be canceled. And I cannot depart these premises until you have fulfilled your destiny. You approach a crossroads, and a decision must be made. What are you to be? Artist or lunchbox? <laughs> Stop it. You are no longer Jim Corn. Get out. You are not yet sensitive, Mike Sullivan. You don't know that. You are Hamlet! No! <laughs> right. That's not mine. How did that get there? Sword. Oh my god. I should call the movers. <laughs> Honey God! What? <laughs> Promised conclusion. Hamlet's duel and death! Excuse me, I can't fence. Hamlet can. <laughs> I can. <laughs> Stop that! I hate swords! I hate violence! I have a gym excuse! I'm done Hamlet! And for the closing moments of the drama, at last he takes action. He assumes a tragic statue. He dies! A hero! This is why one acts. This is why actors are envied. We are allowed to do this sort of thing. Not anymore. We have to stump people. Doubles. Of course! For the soliloquies! <laughs> well done. <laughs> no. Stop. I can't do this. I'm stopping, okay? You're very cute, but I'm not going to play. You think you can force me to be like you, to be Hamlet, to be bold and dashing and vengeful. Well, I don't do that, okay? I'm a liberal. No, no duels, no macho behavior. Not in my house. Your house! Down! My couch! You 
tried to slash my cow. Look at me. So modern. Call whom? 